activist and a member of the 350 Vermont board um, and a wonderful organizer and activist who, who lives here in Vermont. And here are her words that she wanted to say to you all today. We are here today on land stolen from the original stewards of this land. The indigenous people who have called this home long before settlers from other places invaded were never given compensation. They never gave permission, nor were even asked about the destruction of their homeland. Many indigenous people live here still. They continue to fight for their rights and the rights of nature. Corporate controlled models of environmental regulation only protect business interest, trading quote solutions that continue to use fossil fuels for another fossil fuel is not the answer. It perpetuates the destruction of not only human life, but also that of all living beings. It is not only humans that have a right to exist. The humans who will be most affected by these corporate and governmental choices will be the, those least able to survive those proposed changes. BIPOC, differently abled, poverty-stricken communities, and the elderly deserve changes that are really taking their needs into account. Electrifying everything is not a solution if people have no money to pay for them even with rebates. The people in this state house need to hear from everyone who cares about human and nature's rights. Loud and clear, we must raise our voices. This land may have been taken by force from its original caregivers, but today, your ancestors have given you the legacy of restoring the earth so our grandchildren have a home in seven generations. Beverly Littlefinger for writing those words for us. Um, our next speaker is Liz Medina, who is the executive director of the Vermont State Labor Council, AFL-CIO, which is our state's federation of labor unions, representing over 11,000 members. Welcome, Liz. I couldn't agree more. We need to give as much power back to the original holders of this land. And we support, as a labor council, the tax exemption for indigenous lands. And I hope our legislators agree with that. So um, this has been really inspiring today. I love that we started it off with sea shanties, because sea shanties are actually part of a larger legacy of work songs. And work songs had a function of trying to pace the work and organize workers when they were struggling mightily uh, against extreme exploitation, working 10, 12 plus 14 hour days uh, with, for very low wages. And so that is a rich labor history behind work songs. And um, it's worth remembering, you know, why we have to keep fighting <laughs> for labor rights and for workers' rights, right? Uh, so. We now are in a situation where we have very little union density. We used to have around 35% union density in 1954 in this country. And with that, we saw millions of workers being lifted out of poverty. And today, it stands at a mere 11% in Vermont, around 10% nationally. And we're seeing the massive effects of that, right? Literally skyrocketing inequality with Bezos shooting out into space, which and he glibly telling everyone, you know, this is paid for by workers. And so you may be wondering, what does labor exploitation, labor when worker rights have to do with climate change? Well, it has everything to do with it. Because at the end of the day, we are the ones who are gonna do the work here to make the transition. And we can't expect workers to sign up for poverty wages and exploitation. We need to do our best to make sure that this is a just transition. And we need to do a couple of things right here for Vermont to make that happen. First of all, we can increase workers' rights and stop this downward trend uh, in, of, of workers' rights being eroded by labor laws that have been eviscerated decade after decade by passing majority sign-up and making it easier for workers in the public sector to form unions. And 
second of all, we need to make sure whatever kind of climate legislation that comes out of this state is not funded on the backs of the working class. Yeah. Right? We need to make sure this is a just transition. You know, the rich have contributed the most to the pollution and the climate devastation in their corporations, and they need to pay. They have the highest responsibility for this. And so we need to make sure whatever we do, that we have that class analysis behind what we're doing and we're making sure the, those who have the most ability to pay are paying for this transition. And then, you know, labor will stand behind a, a climate transition and a just transition. And we will do the work, we will make it happen. So I want to leave you all today with just the message that, you know, we have the power in their numbers if we can build unity and uh, come across with all our issues. We can make this happen. We have the power. We got the numbers. So with me one time, I want you to raise your fist in the air and say, we got the numbers. We got the numbers. We got the numbers. We got the numbers. Thank you so much. Thank you, Liz. Next, we have Jasmine Gruen, who is a junior at U32 Middle and High School, as well as a musician and activist. Welcome, Jasmine. I am afraid to try to live in a dying world. I am afraid that I won't be able to raise my children the way my parents raised me. I'm afraid. Growing up, I was taught that one of the most important lives is having an appreciation for the earth and being in relationship with it. The food we grow, the water we drink, the forests we wander. When I have kids, it will be so hard for them to connect with anything natural because the natural world will have lost its essence. Even the lack of snow this winter is an example of how that's already happening. Our seasons are losing their shimmer. The earth is losing its magic. And it's hard to stay connected to something you know you're going to lose. But my children will be the lucky ones. They will mourn the loss of natural beauty, but they won't be the first to suffer the loss of their homes, their food sources, and their access to clean water. The climate crisis is not just, but the solutions can be. And I am angry, because while it's not an easy fix, slowing the effects of climate change is 100% possible. And I am angry, because we have solutions, but we just continue to allow ourselves to move closer and closer to this looming deadline. And I am angry, because our elected officials and corporate leaders aren't willing to put in the hard work. They just continue to give us all these excuses as, why, as to why we can't make this crisis our number one priority. This Woo! needs to be the number one priority. Woo! This needs to be one thing that the entire world agrees on. This cannot be up for discussion. This is not an issue belonging to modern day politics driven by greed and ego. This is survival. I'm not gonna stand up here and list the multitude of ways we can make positive change because we all know those by now. But I am going to tell you that I'm terrified and I'm hurt because it really seems like our leadership doesn't care about us, about our futures. Shouldn't we be able to at least show our children the beauty of the world that we grew up in? Are we going to sit back and watch as they trade our lives for money? No! Change needs to happen, and it needs to happen now! Woo! There is no other option! Woo! Thank you.
Yeah. Good afternoon. My name is Gabe Groveman. It makes me so happy to see everyone here today. I truly hope this demonstrates to lawmakers that we're here, we're watching you, and we care about our climate. As a young person, it has become exhausting growing up in a world where study after study shows the worsening effects of climate change and the narrowing amount of time we have left to change course. Every day that we do nothing is a day of my future, the future of Vermont, the future that all young people are going to live in grows darker. It's hard to just stand by and watch this happen and disappoint to see so much apathy from some of the top leaders in our state. My generation did not create this crisis, yet we will be forced to live with the consequences. If another legis legislative session goes by without continued bold and just climate action. If we stall now or move backwards, we have no shot in protecting the immense beauty of Vermont or, the vi or a viable future for the next generation. I'm always struck by the consistency of Vermonters of all ages continually showing up for causes that they believe in. I mean, how many times have we been on the state house st steps telling our leaders that we need for our climate? I wish I could see the same consistency within our legislators and state leadership. I'm thankful for those in the state who have stepped up and offered smart and equitable solutions to the climate crisis. And as this session progresses, I hope more can do the same. The youth cannot afford to wait. I, can, I cannot afford to wait. This is bigger than short-term economic progress. This is bigger than any corporation. This is, what my, this, is what my, this is about what my life will look like and what the life of our state will look like if we do nothing. I wouldn't be up here today if I didn't think we could do this, and I look forward to seeing what we can do together to steer this ship. Thank you. Woo! Thank you, Gabe. All right, next we have Jesse Scarlato, who is a longtime 350 Vermont volunteer and former board member and a member of Sunrise Montpelier. Welcome, Jesse. Thank you. I want to start by sharing a quote that I think captures a lot of what I've been thinking about. This is from Paul Hawken. He says, to reverse global warming, we need to address current human needs, not an imagined dystopian future. Everything is connected to climate change, which can be overwhelming to think about. But at the same time, it can be empowering. Whatever you do in your daily life, whatever you are deeply connected to, whatever relationships you already have and communities that you are a part of, there exists an opportunity to organize people and to transform the bigger systems we are connected to. You don't have to know a lot about policy or be willing to chain yourself to a piece of drilling equipment to make a difference. There are as many solutions as there are people on the planet. Our work is about finding the power we didn't know we had and helping others find the power they didn't know that they had, which might not, lo not look like our own. It's about being each other's strength. When we doubt our ability to make a difference, when we burn out, when we feel hopeless or overwhelmed, we are so much stronger and more resilient when we work together. Working to address, mitigate, and reverse climate change is work we are going to be doing for a long time. We can't solve these problems with the same kind of short-term thinking that created them. Our work is not just about what happens in this legislative session. Our work is to change what is politically possible. And we need you to help to make that happen. You and your friends and your family because we are stronger together. <laughs> Policies that address emissions, but continue to support an economy that is exploitive and extractive are not a solution. <laughs> we need solutions that make people's lives better now. We need solutions for the end of the world and the end of the month. And we need people all across Vermont to make sure that people at all levels of government are prioritizing a just transition that leaves no one behind. Climate change is not separate from other issues. A livable wage, stable housing, the ability to organize a union are all part of the solution. 
not just in addressing the impacts of climate change on those of us who are most impacted, but in building the kind of political power we need to transform our economy from one that is based in extraction and exploitation to one that makes people's lives better and makes a future where we can all live and thrive. Thank you.
now is that any youth who want to um, can join um, a, a few different folks over here who are going to bring in the rest of the Valentines um, into the um, State House and deliver it to the legislators. And then we're going to have a beautiful song by Aro Veno, who's going to sing as everyone else leaves. Um, before we do that, I just want to thank you for living through four different seasons with us in the last hour and a half. Um, thank you for sticking it through. Um, thank you for showing up, and thank you to our co-sponsors. Um, the Vermont Youth Lobby, State House Fridays, VPER, Vail, Rights and Democracy, Vermont Renews Coalition, Vermont AFL-CIO, Standing Trees, and Vermont Extinction Rebellion. Um, again, I'm Sonia with 350 Vermont. We've got a few tables down there with lots of ways for you all to get involved. We have a Just Transition study group um, that we're just opening registration for this week. We have lots of ways to get involved in this legislative session over the next few months. Um, thank you for being here, and thank you especially to our all-volunteer planning committee, who was very adaptable <laughs> and, and, really, and really made this happen. Um, so thank you all so much. And anyone who wants to join the delivery of the Valentines can come on over here. And I'm going to pass it to Aro Veno to sing us out. Can you hear me okay with my mask? Bring it close. Yeah, rock star. Right in your mouth. Is that good? Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so on this very bizarrely warm February day, um, <laughs> um, thank you all for being here today. Uh, we were all disappointed to have to cancel on Friday due to the crazy climate chaos weather that we've been experiencing pretty much every season that we've had in the last week. Um, and one of the things we know we need to um, face the climate crisis ahead and that we live in now is adaptability. So thank you all for making it work today. Um, and we know there's many, many people who wish they could have been with us in person but couldn't make it work on a Wednesday. And we have actually some wonderful, wonderful messages from them that we'll be um, sharing with the legislators and hopefully reading out loud later as well. So uh, my name is Sonia Silbert, I'm part of the staff collective at 315 Vermont, and um, what we're going to do here today is I'm going to start with a brief land acknowledgement, and then we're going to do this very beautiful art installation of waves rising to the state house, and anyone who wants to participate is more than welcome. We have lots more um, props and costumes that we can use. And then the waves will kind of recede back to where the um, podium and mic stand are up there. And we have some really wonderful speakers um, lined up as well as um, some great tables from uh, our uh, co-sponsoring organizations. So that's the plan. Come along for the ride. So I want to begin by naming that we are on the unceded land on the Abenaki and the Wabanaki people who have cared for it for generations and continue to do so. Their relationship... Their relationship...
Schwartz, who is the uh, artist and activist behind this first installation, who is a Burlington-based artist and activist who creates community-engaged art inspired by patterns in nature. Thank you, Rebecca. Loud really and great to gather with you and um, yeah so we are going to do an art installation in a few minutes and while I'm speaking briefly about plastics and how I came to this work and the issues of plastics connecting to climate change I invite you all to please come there's many plastic tarps there's many uh, drop cloths and these are going to be transformed into waves that we will create the illusion of rising up and over, over the state house to help make visible the issues of climate justice and climate change. The weather is certainly weird, but we're going to help show that to our legislators to see that they have support to take action. So please come on over and grab something while I say a few words. The more, the merrier. So, I have been making art with post-consumer plastics and then I realized it's time to make art for direct action and change. And we have this petition that over 300 people signed to modernize the bottle bill, to give us the right to repair our goods so they're truly good, and to <laughs> to make producers responsible for the pollution that they are creating. Yeah. But this will be one of the many waves that lifts up. So please come on over and get something. Um, so, let's see. The issue of plastics and its toxins, pollution, and climate change, with the petroclimate chemicals they're made from, polluting and poisoning us and our neighbors and relatives of all species. Plastics pollute our homes and are leaching out into our landscapes. And they show the wealth disparities and racialized injustices of the current system where they're made, mostly in this country, in black communities, in an area that's now known as Cancer Alley. And in where the plastics end up, often overseas and in the seas, full size and breaking into microplastics, moving up our food chain and disrupting health. So we are here to inspire Vermont to keep going. You know, we have that plastic bag ban and the straws, but we have way more work to do. With business as usual, we will see a threefold increase in the amount of ocean plastics by 2040. That's just 18 years. So when today's babies graduate from high school, there'll be three times more ocean plastic. But that's only if we allow it. And we don't allow it. This is why we are gathered here to plan, demand, and vision having way back on plastic, getting repair and reuse systems set up, having that right to repair, and holding big corporate polluters responsible for their mess of plastic packaging and waste. And to start off, let's modernize our bottle bill. It works, but keep it strong. So we're gonna make new laws to tackle interconnected issues of health, climate, economy, racism, poverty, and planet for our regenerative circular economy. We are creative and we are supportive. Many more people wanted to be here physically but they are with us in spirit and we're supported by this earth holding us in so many ways. So, this illusion of, of the waves won't work without you all though. So, <laughs> I really need all of these tarps to be taken up and taken, taken by to work together. And what I'd like to see is a circle of tarps. So that's a good word, all this information. I just don't want to trust that. And um, that's the blue. So if you would find a color that was similar to you, and I want the road to be connected. So if you have a stick, find a way to connect to your neighbor.
material. Who's up for being in the middle in this way? Basically, the person on the edge, if you're on the, the edge, you'll go 